Welcome to another edition of the McAnulty Method, where financial expert Frank McAnulty shares his insights and knowledge with us so that we can live a life um, more free from financial worries and constraints. Frank, good to see you. Bill, good to see you again, too. Happy to be here. Well, we're happy to have you. And I know that you had a particular topic you wanted to discuss with us tonight. So I'm just going to turn it over to you. What is that topic? Planning. Why you need a financial plan. And why you really, really, really need a financial plan when you're just getting started out. Okay, so because uh, I, we have had people write in saying, hey, uh, I don't have any money. Why do I need a plan? So uh, illuminate us. Well, I'm going to try to, my background tonight, I left it on as a river. And I remember Lewis and Clark, they were going to find the Pacific Ocean. It wasn't just, well, let's find the Pacific Ocean. And they took off walking. They had to have a plan. They didn't know where it was. They weren't particularly sure how they were going to get there. They weren't sure how it was going to, how long it was going to take, but they had a goal. And so really planning's about setting up a goal. And then what do we have to do to get to that goal? And so people without money, people who are just graduating college, they have to, Get a plan. We what's what's our goal in life? And goals can change over time. It's not nothing set in stone. But if you have a goal, then you can start figuring out what it's going to take to get to your goal. All right, uh, and I certainly understand that. And you know, if you talk to almost anybody, they can throw out things like, "Oh yeah, I want to get a really nice big house," or "I want to be able to vacation uh, for a month." and Europe every uh, summer, there's uh, people have those kind of goals, but what else needs to go into the plan? Well, let's, let's start with a simple example. Say you have a goal of, I want to have a million dollars in the bank. Okay, sounds right. like a horribly difficult thing to accomplish. But I actually read something earlier today where somebody was doing an analysis that if you put the minimum amount in an IRA every year, and they, they had it for 37 and a half years, and you can earn 7% on that money, which is not unreasonable if you have it vested in the stock market, you will have a million dollars. So it's like, okay, goal is a million dollars. How are we going to get to the million dollars? There's one way. Fund my IRA fully for the next 37 and a half years, don't touch it, don't mess with it, I will have a million dollars. You know, that, frankly, that sounds great. I wish you told me that about 37 and a half years ago. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I was thinking the exact same thing when I was reading that. <laughs> now, but what do you do? I mean, how do you adjust this stuff in case you have another plan. Like, yeah, I want a million dollars in the bank, but I also want a house and I'm thinking about starting a family. Uh, what is that gonna take? A plan has three parts. What do you need? Yeah, we all need food, shelter. Okay, what's our needs? What's our wants? And what's our goals? So let's say, our needs are, oh, I need an apartment, I need food, I, I'd like a car of some sort. Okay, those are our needs. What's it gonna take for us to get to our needs? Yeah, might not be that big a stretch. Might be, oh, I get a, I get a job, I, you know, I get a job making $50,000 a year. Okay, I can cover my needs. Well, now I have wants, I want, said. I want to buy a house. I want to, I want a house. I want to get married. I want to have children. Those are my wants. So you have to sit down and say, okay, what is it going to take to accomplish those wants? Now, getting married has nothing to do with a financial plan or it shouldn't, but it factors into it. 
the house is part of a financial plan because what's realistic? Okay, I want a house, I want cars, I want to be married, I want to have kids, I want to send them to private schools. But you know, I'm done with school after high school. Well, that's not a very realistic financial plan. Now, I'm going to trade Bitcoin and I'm going to become a Bitcoin millionaire. So I don't need any more education. I got this all figured out. Good luck. I hope it works for you. You know, you mentioned one other thing in there that um, about marriage and family and all this stuff. Um, <clears throat> when you're married, it seems to me like a financial plan is maybe even more important because uh, you, now you got two people traveling down the river and you want to make sure you're both in the same boat or, or both think you're headed for the same place. So well, that you're that's, that, that's part of the whole financial planning process. You start out making a financial plan by yourself because it's just you. Now, like I said, all of a sudden there's someone else in the boat. So you have to make sure the financial plan works for both of you. It meets both of your desires. So number one, financial plans change. Great. When you're single, here's my financial plan. Oh, I got married. Here's my new financial plan. Oh, we're having children. Here's my new financial plan. <laughs> Oh, the kids are the kids are really smart. They want to go to Harvard. Oh, here's my new financial plan. Um, you know, all all of these things, the financial plan can change constantly. Oh, well, maybe not constantly. That's probably a bad choice of word. But it's a living document. It's not it's not carved in stone. Where it's like, well, no, I said this is what I'm going to do, and this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. I probably shouldn't hit my camera, should I? Um, <laughs> so this is the way it has to be. No, things change. Things are I'm always ask you that uh, even if things are kind of just going along, you know, life is moving very smoothly at the moment, about how often should people take a look at their plans and see, is it time to change? I would, I would say they need to look at their financial plan at least once a year or when any big thing happens, marriage, jobs change, moving, children, um, children moving out of the house, children getting their own jobs, um, getting closer to retirement. Those are all things that are gonna cause the plan to change. But let's, let's step back a little of why it's so important for somebody, I'm not sure, I don't feel we hit it hard enough why it's so important somebody just starting out has this plan. Because they need to get there and they need a roadmap. You don't start on any long journey and just say, well, I want to go to, I want to drive to New York. Okay. I know it's East. I'm going to get on the freeway going East. Yeah, sure. You'll get there. Maybe not the most effective way. Um, so you have to have an idea. And I think it also helps shape what you're going to do to get there. Like I said. That's, you that's want... something you've talked about. Well, I say that's something you've talked about before is uh, once you know where you want to go, you might find other roads to get there. More Wait. than one way to skin that cat. Yeah. College degree is not the end all be all for everybody. I know, I know very happy, successful people that didn't go to college, but they got a skill. They learned a trade. They now own their own companies, doing quite well. So part of the part of the plan is okay, this is what I think I want, because none of us really know what we want. We learn it over time. This is what I think what I want. What am I going to have to do to get there? You know, I, I want a Rolls Royce. Well, you're going to have to do a lot of things to get to that Rolls Royce. Um, and that's great. There's nothing wrong with wanting a Rolls Royce. I had a friend growing up that 
his sole entire goal in life was to become a millionaire. And he became one. Now he's a multimillionaire, but it was everything he did was around getting to that point. And so it's, it's sort of, a, you build the plan. First, you set your goals then you build the plan to reach those goals. And then you have to act on the plan. Well, let's see, I want, I want to earn this much and do this. Well, how are you going to do it? Are you going to become a computer expert? Are you going to become a doctor? Are you going to become an accountant? Are you going to become a bricklayer? Are you going to learn electric, electrician's job? All of those things are great. But if you don't know how you're going to get there, then the plan makes no sense. But having the plan helps you figure out how you're going to get there. And let's face it, that. Lewis and Clark's plan probably changed two days out from St. Louis. Oh, oh geez, what's, you know, something went wrong. Something happened. You know, the whole plan changed when they met Sacagawea. Because all of a sudden it's like, oh, we have somebody who's going to help us actually accomplish our goal, who actually knows what they're doing who can talk to the people we're gonna meet along our way. And so their plan changed, fortunately it changed for the better, but they had a plan to start out with. You know, it's, it's funny, you mentioned that. How, uh, how much sense does it make for people to talk to a financial planner who has been down the road, or at least you think they have? Uh, can you just comment on that? I, I think it's great for people to talk to a financial planner, you know, just because it's someone else to talk to, someone to get ideas from. You don't necessarily have to sign up with them, but they'll all talk to you once and what, and they'll go through the process. I just discussed, what are your goals? What, what do you want to accomplish out of life? What do you want to get out of life? How do you see your life unfolding? And it's like, okay, what are you going to have to get there? And like I said, it's, you know, with the example with a million dollars, like you and I both said, I wish somebody would have told us this, made us sit down and understand it when we both got out of college. It's like, wait a minute, if I just do this and leave it alone and don't think about it, It'll grow to a million dollars. We both have a million dollars right now, Bill. Well, probably just as well I don't, Frank. You know, I'd probably blow it on a, a river trip to recreate Lewis and Clark's uh, expedition. Speaking of which, did they have a set time when they thought, when it's like, okay, uh, Lewis and Clark, go ahead, we'll fund this. You got uh, six months to get to the Pacific. Did they have a uh, deadline? No, because... Once they got on their journey, there was no one to tell them what to do. It was entirely up to them, just like it is to everybody. Yep. They took off from St. Louis. There weren't phones. There weren't cell phones. There weren't, there weren't even telegraphs. There was no way for anybody to know what they were doing, how they were doing it, which direction they were going. There was no one to tell them you're going the wrong way. So... You know, they just had to keep saying, okay, what do we have to do to get there? Oh, there's these giant mountains in front of us. Well, guess we got to figure out a way around them. Just like everybody will have a giant mountain at one time or another in their financial life, something will happen. You know, it's a very fortunate person in life that goes through their entire life without a, a uh, difficulty popping up from something. So, no, absolutely. Um, <laughs> uh, climbing mountains. Uh, I'm just, uh, just kind of curious if you could um, wrap it up just a little bit with like one last piece of advice. For, I, you said something about it's important to get started. And uh, I, I think that's always true. It's like Lewis and Clark, you know, until you uh, get off the boat in St. Louis and start walking. When, how, what kind of advice can you give people to get started with their plan and start taking action? Well, you know, I hate to steal somebody's slogan, but just do it. And 
like I said, you don't know what your ultimate goals in life are. You think you do, but they change over time. They change as your age change. They change as you meet people. They change as your career changes, but it's just start. Okay, this, this is my goal right now. I want to accomplish, I want to do this. I want to have, I'm tired of living in apartments. I want to be able to buy my own place. You may not want a house because you're single. You don't want to be burdened with a house. We both know a house is a lot of work. There's always something to do around a house. So you say, okay, I want to buy a condo, townhouse, something where I don't have to pay rent and deal with landlords and everything else. So, okay, go out and look and say, okay, it's going to cost me, well, Southern California, it's going to cost me $500,000 for a condo, which means it's going to cost me well, there's, there's first-time homeowner down payment plans. So let's say it's going to cost me $50,000 to buy a condo to get the down payment. Okay. What do I have to do to get $50,000? Will my current job get me $50,000? And how long will it take? So there you go. I still have, I still have my needs. I still have to eat. I still have to pay right now. So I'm going to be saving money, which we already discussed how important it is to save. But now you have a goal you're saving towards. And let's face it, you're young. You know, if you really want to buy your own place, you can always pick up a part-time second job. And all of that money can go into savings. I had a, had a girl that grew up across the street from us and... Uh, she really wanted to own her own place. And I think at one time she had three jobs and none of them were what you'd call spectacular jobs. They were just basic, just above minimum wage, but also a couple of them had tips. And I was surprised at how quickly she got to the point where she could buy her own place. So, but she had a goal and then she had a plan. I'm going to do this. And so that's why I say it's really important for people getting started to have a plan so they can figure out how am I going to do this? Like I said, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, they don't need a plan. They don't need a financial plan. They got so much money that I'm not going to say they couldn't spend it all because they could. But it'd be really hard. They'd almost, right. need, they'd almost need a plan to spend all their money in order to get rid of it all. <laughs> um, um, I think I, this, this is all great stuff. And we're starting to run a little over time. So I just want to ask you, it's, it's um, once you've got your goal, you got your plan on how to get there, you've decided to just do it. Um, what would the next step be? And you don't have to tell us all of it right now. You can tell us in the next video if you want. Okay, well, since, since we're sort of at our self-imposed time limit here, why don't we work on that for next time? So that's what we'll talk about. How to get, how to, we'll, we'll go through step-by-step step in building your plan. How's that? That's perfect. That's exactly, I think, what, we all need. All right. Well, thank you, Frank. I'll, uh, you. I guess I'll see you next time and I'll be taking notes. Okay. See you next week. All right.